Hi, this is Mike Green, uh, Dodgy on the Lightwave forums, and I'm just going to run you through how to start up and connect uh, Lightwave 2019 to the Unreal Engine using the new Unreal Bridge. So, start up by going to your Lightwave directory in support, third party support, Unreal Engine. There will be a, a version number with a version that you want to match to your Unreal Engine. So in this case I have UA, UE 4.21 installed and then in here I've got Unreal 4.21 and uh, obviously this will be updated as Unreal gets updated and as Lightwave gets updated. So when you get a new Lightwave you'll have to copy this bridge across to keep it uh, up to date with the latest versions and the latest features that they have from my way. So I'm just going to copy that to the Unreal Engine Plugins Editor. Now, uh, if you plug it in, put it in here, uh, it'll mean that it will show up in whatever Unreal you want to run it in. Uh, you can place it just for a per project, but I'm going to be using it for all the projects I work with, because why not? So that's the Unreal, where you've got Unreal, UE 4.21, and then Engine, Plugins, and then Editor. So that's in there. Next, launch your Unreal. So go to your Epic Launcher and open that up. You can see I've got 4.211 here. So I'm going to launch that. And while that's loading, I'm just going to switch to Lightwave. You can see here I've got a scene set up with uh, various materials on it. And the way you have the Unreal bridge on your scene is by going to Utilities, Master Plugins, and then there's a plugin here called Unreal Bridge. So if we just remove that for a second, I'll show you the. So if we want to find it, we can now use the finding function in drop downs. So if you just click on a drop down and then start typing, properly. You can see it highlights the one that matches. Click Unreal Bridge. And then we've got the Unreal Bridge here. Okay, so we want to go back to here, the Unreal window. And we want to create a blank uh, project. So I'll just call that test. Obviously choose where you want it to be saved and create the project. So here's the project. And you can see you've got a, a little window here called New Project Plugins Are Available. So if we click on Manage Plugins, you can see here we've got an Lightwave 3D Bridge icon with a Bridge New. And if we enable that, we'll have to restart. So if we click Restart now. Okay, so we can see that the Unreal's restarted and the Lightwave Bridge is now enabled. So let's just close that. And here we've got the standard Unreal Engine base scene. So let's go across to Lightwave and if we click Connect, you can see all these things suddenly become enabled. So let's take you through the panel. So you have Disconnect, obviously to disconnect from the Unreal. You've got Advanced Connection Settings. Now if you click this, this will list all the Unreal instances that are currently running and it means that you can connect to an Unreal instance that's not necessarily on your PC. So for example on a second PC that you work with or someone else's PC. So you can choose that there, which one you want to connect to. You've got your different options here for overwrite meshes. So if you've changed the mesh you want to overwrite those. Overwrite materials if you change the materials. Overwrite transformations if you've animated it and changed it. Bake animation so that will bake any IK or that kind of non-forward K animation that you've set up, non-keyframed animation. You've got use alternate Unreal Root, which basically is so that you can group all your objects in a subfolder and keep them all together. Uh, you've got live sync, so you can have that on and it will automatically send changes through as you make them. Um, you might not want that all the time because it probably it will slow down, you know, in some cases. So you can turn that off. 
Uh, if you want to sync, you can you sync selected or sync all. So obviously, depending on what you've got selected, it'll update just those things, or it can update all of them at the same time. Items to send, you can do selected or all. This is for when you've got a live sync off, so you can choose when to send stuff across. You can send transforms only, so if you just change where everything's moved to, you can just update those. Or you can send the animation sequence, that'll send the animation through the entire timeline across to Unreal. Okay, and if you uh, want to, you can actually fetch transforms from Unreal. So if you've moved something in Unreal, you can bring it back across to Lightwave. You can't bring animation, I don't think, but you can bring sort of just that first transform. So if you've moved a tree or something that's not going to be moving that much, then you can bring stuff back into Unreal that way. Okay, so let's just try that. I'm going to click Overwrite Materials here um, and click Send. So nothing's happened in Lightwave, but if you go across to Unreal, you can see it's brought in the balls and now it's just building the shaders. And this is where it can take a, a little while uh, because the shaders are obviously quite complex, so it's having to think about how to do those. So you can see there's one popped in already here. Uh, as you can see, it's created a folder in here called Textures, and that's where it's going to stick all the textures for the materials. Uh, we've got a Balls folder, which is for the object, so you get a separate folder for each object in the scene. Now the objects, layers come in as individual objects within that directory. So uh, in this one we've just got one object, which is the Balls object. And then you've got a subdirectory which has materials in it. So you can see here are the materials that have come across. And you can see them slowly popping in as they compile. This is probably why you don't want it to be doing everything live. I mean, uh, we'll update in the background. And I'll just show you the connection for that. So if you've got the live on, you probably want to go to Editor Preferences and look at performance and there's a use less CPU when in background toggle so it's a good idea to have that on when you're using the live function uh, because then as it updates in Lightwave it'll update it in the background and it'll try to minimize how much CPU usage so there you go you can see we've got all the balls in there uh, from Lightwave and uh, with various different materials on and I'll be taking you through the different materials that you can use and which ones are not going to be as compatible with Unreal uh, in another video. Okay, so we have all our balls with their materials on. Um, if we want to change something in Lightwave, then we might want to have that update in Unreal live. So here I've got my balls on my scene. I can see that I've got a camera here and I've got two lights pointing in the opposite directions. Uh, let's light, light one and light two. If we go to the Unreal editor, you can see we've got a similar setup. We've got a camera, which is here. We've got a camera target setup. We've got the floor, which is just the standard Unreal floor. We've got atmospheric fog for like that comes in by default. We've got our balls object in the outliner. And then we've got our two lights, light one and light two. Again, pointing in different directions. And we've also got a light source, which is used to drive the clouds, which is brought in by the standard sort of Unreal scene setup. Uh, you've got a player start. So that will start the uh, player if you start the game. Now I've got the sky sphere, again, which is brought in, and the skylight. And the sphere reflection capture, which is how Unreal does reflections. So, what can we change live? Let's have a look, shall we? So, if I want to say change the light colour, let's make it a red, and let's turn on live sync. So if we change the colour over here, you can see it automatically updates the light color over here, got it now a nice pink color. If we rotate the light around, 
So it's pointing in a different direction. Then it automatically updates that in Unreal. And obviously if we move the camera around, then the camera is moved in Unreal as well. And if we go back to that wave, we can adjust the brightness of the the light. So if we go down to something tiny. You can see that adjusts the brightness of the light as well. So oh and also if we say rotate the balls or move them about a bit or scale them, then you can see that gets updated in Unreal as well. So the live function is working as we'd expect in most cases. So I hope that's something you've got working and you shouldn't have any problems.